Namaste, all. We're glad that you've joined us at Sanctuary Church. We want to welcome you here. Um, why don't you let us know where you are connecting from and your name. We'd love to say hi. Let's enjoy the service. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head And I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful as you have And all my life you have been so so good With every breath that I am able And I will sing of the goodness of God Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, and I will sing of the goodness of God, and I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Hey, thanks again for joining us online for worship and our service. Uh, we had the opportunity to gather in person last week. It was amazing. Uh, once a month we gather for worship and once a month we gather for brunch. And so last Sunday we gathered in person for a worship service and it was fantastic as we just worshiped together, took communion together, looked to the scriptures together, had our kids run around together. It was amazing. And so uh, thanks for joining us online. We'd love to have you join us in person. And next Sunday we're gathering in person for brunch. Uh, the church building on the corner of Yale and Coy Road, 10 a.m. If you're in Chilliwack and would love to just kind of spend some time together with like-minded people who are kind of following Jesus and exploring what following Jesus means and looks like, yeah, join us for brunch. It would be great to have you here. Um, when I'm putting a message together and just trying to kind of say, okay, how do I lay this out? There's three questions that I I try to answer, try to address and, and answer in some way. And those questions are what, so what, and now what? Well, kind of the first question is just what, like what are we looking at here? What's the passage? What's the theme? What's the topic? What's the idea? What's the explanation? What's the context? Just what, what is it we're actually looking here? 
And then from there, I moved on to so what? Okay, why is this important? Kind of like Trivia Pursuit. Kind of, we have all these kind of facts and data, but like this doesn't matter at all that I know this trivia bit or this fact. And there is information that we carry around in our heads and minds sometimes that really has no effect or importance in our lives. But to say as we look at the scriptures or look at Jesus, okay, why is this important? So what? So what? Why do we look at this? And then now what? Okay, what does this mean? What's the application of this? How do I integrate what we've just looked at into my life? How does it perhaps shape and influence my thinking, my attitudes, my perspectives, my posture? So those are three questions. What, so what, and now what? Last week, we looked at Psalm 23 and two of the pictures that it presents us with. What is God like and the life that he desires for us? And so what I'd like to do this morning is take a little bit more time and push that so what question down the road a little bit more and just kind of dig in a little deeper to that as we look at the question of what is God like? Why is that important to have this picture of God? And why is it important to have a proper picture or proper understanding of God? And the reason it's important, and we're going to spend a few minutes looking at that, is because what we believe about God, our picture about, of God, or our understanding of God, changes everything. It absolutely affects how we live. It affects how we love, how we love ourselves and view ourselves, how we love others and those around us, how we respond to situations in the world. It affects how we work. It affects how we live, how, how are the relationships we have, how we handle our money, how we parent those around us. Every aspect of our lives is influenced and shaped by our picture of God. And we will always have some mental picture of God, for better or for worse. Everybody has one. He's an absentee landlord. He's this, he's that. He doesn't exist. So so everybody has this mental picture of God in their mind, and it has incredible influence on shaping our lives, for better or for worse. And there's actually been studies that have been done that show that if you have a more of a fear-based understanding or picture of God, it actually affects the structure and the development of your brain. People who have more of a fear-based understanding or image or picture of God tend to be less capable to have loving and peaceful discussions and conversations with people on issues they disagree about. And they tend to be more quick-tempered, and they tend to be more controlling. And all of that is just some of the way our brain gets wired and shaped coming out of this particular picture or understanding of God. We become the kind of person we worship. That's why we, we are careful in the songs that we would sing and we would invite others to sing with us because they present a picture of God and we become like the God we worship. If we have a threatening or judgmental picture of God, we will become threatening or judgmental. You know, we'll, we'll move in that direction. That will begin to be some of the things that gets expressed through our lives. If we have a controlling picture of God, we will become more controlling. If we have an exclusive picture of God that God says, these are my people, whoever they are and wherever that line gets drawn, we'll tend to have those expressions and those characteristics in our life. We'll become exclusive in some ways. Whatever our picture of God is, it will shape our lives and the course of our lives for better or for worse. And the Bible tells us this. In Psalm 115, verse 8, the psalmist says, And those who make idols are just like them, as are all who trust in them. So basically saying is, we become like the God we worship. So whatever our picture of God is, whatever our understanding of God is, we're being drawn in that direction. So it's incredibly important. So what? It's incredibly important that we have a proper understanding or picture of God because we're going to become more and like more and more like that. And so as we're thinking about this, maybe you're thinking to yourself right now, well, the Bible gives us lots of pictures about God. Maybe there just isn't one picture of God, but maybe there's lots. Instead of a picture, it's more like an art gallery with all kinds of different pictures. And that is true. The Bible does give us many different pictures of God. And as we look through the Bible, we see pictures of a God of war. We see pictures of a God of vengeance. 
we see pictures of a God who does exclude people and say, these are my children and they are not and this is where my blessing lands and that's where, and we, and we get these pictures. We see pictures of a God who demands blood sacrifice to appease his anger and please him. But alongside these pictures, uh, we also get pictures of a God of peace. We get pictures of a God of love and compassion. We get pictures of a God who is generous and longs to bless. We get pictures of a God who is patient and in his dealings with us. And so all these different pictures, this art gallery, if you will, of different pictures of God, leaves us kind of scratching our head and wondering, okay, what is God like? Well, while the, while the Bible does give us these many different pictures of God, as you kind of look through the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Bible also tells us that it's Jesus who gives us the perfect picture of what God is like, that Jesus perfectly reveals God to us and shows us what God is like. The Bible says this several times. Jesus himself says this several times. In John 1.18, Jesus says, no one has ever seen God. But the unique one, referring to himself, who is himself God, is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Jesus says, I'm revealing, I'm showing you what God looks like. In John 12, verses 44 and 45, here we have Jesus again. Jesus shouted to the crowds, if you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. Jesus says, when you look at me, you're seeing God. This is what God is like. I'm what God is like, Jesus is saying. And in John 14, 9, again, he says this, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And the author of Hebrews reiterates the same idea. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 says this, long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance and through the son, he created the universe. Now here, catch this. The son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. So in this passage, the one in Hebrews, the author states very clearly that Jesus shows us the very character of God. This is what God is like. This is the picture of God. Not one of many, but the picture. While there are other pictures, as we just talked about, this is the true picture, the most accurate picture, the perfect picture picture. This is what God is like. But in the same time that the author of Hebrews is doing this, he's also drawing a contrast from the past. And he's saying, you know, in past days, when God speak, spoke to us, we would get glimpses of what he was like through the prophets and others. We get these glimpses and these truths and these pictures of what God is like. But now in this day, he's saying, we have the most accurate, most clear most perfect picture of what God is like. Then we had bits and pieces, but now we have the perfect picture and most full revelation of what God is like. See, the authors of the scriptures were human beings, just like you and I, and they didn't always see or understand God clearly in the same way we've probably also experienced. And I don't know if any of us would say, you know what, I always understand what God is up to absolutely clearly. I always understand what he's saying to me absolutely clearly. I always see him clearly. No, no, none of us would say that because we're human beings and we're navigating through life and past experiences and disappointments and the culture we're raised in. And all of these things shape us. And so the authors of scripture were human beings just like we were, and they were in influenced by the cultures they lived in, by the experiences they had had, and by the context they found themselves in. And when the Holy Spirit inspired them to write the texts that they did, which are now our scriptures, God didn't just take control of them and override them and make them like robots just with this hand with a pen or a quill in their hands to write exactly what he wanted. He didn't override their humanity and their free will. He worked with them. The story is absolutely about God, 
But God in his love lets his children tell the story. And so in this passage of Scripture that we looked at last week, and if you haven't had a time, if you haven't had the opportunity to listen to it, I would encourage you to kind of go on our YouTube channel, and it's Psalm 23, and it just talks about the pictures of God. And so kind of you can look, listen to that afterwards at some point. But what we looked at last week, Psalm 23, David, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was able to see through the shadows of the culture he lived in and the pictures of the gods of his age and how people thought of the gods of his age and ascribed worth and praise and value and honor to them, which at that time were gods of war and vengeance and all of that. But David, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, was able to see through the shadows of culture and context and he got this glimpse or he got this picture of God and he shares it with us, the shepherd the good shepherd, and he tells us who this shepherd is and how this shepherd will interact with us and how this shepherd will guide us and what this shepherd longs for us and desires for us in walking relationship with us. And we get this beautiful picture of God that David sees under the inspiration of the Holy, Sh- Holy Spirit, our good shepherd filled with unfailing love who's promised to never leave us. And just so we can be certain that this isn't just one more picture amongst many pictures, because it's one thing to say, well, how do we know David got it right if this other author potentially didn't get it right? What's to make David's picture the one that is true? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because how we have confidence knowing that David's glimpse of what God is like was kind of inspired by the Holy Spirit and kind of peered through the shadows was that Jesus himself picks up that picture and affirms that it's him and it's about him. See, Jesus says in John chapter 10, verses 11 and 14, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd sacrifices his life for his sheep. And in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. He says it again. I know my own sheep, and they know me. See, years before this, back to Psalm 23, David was inspired by the Holy Spirit to kind of share this message and get this glimpse and this picture of God. And he writes this Psalm 23 of the Lord is my shepherd. And he tells us about this good shepherd And it's amazing, this wonderful picture of God. And then Jesus comes, and to an audience that would have known well the Psalm 23 and the Lord who is our shepherd and this picture of our shepherd, Jesus comes and then says, guess what? I am the shepherd. I'm the the shepherd that was spoken about. And not only am I the shepherd, I perfectly reveal God to you. I give you a perfect picture of what God is like. So Jesus, our shepherd, perfectly reveals what God is like to us. I love this quote by pastor and author Brian Zond as he pulls together these scripture verses and thoughts and kind of says it like this. He says this, God is like Jesus. God has always been like Jesus. There has never been a time when God was not like Jesus. We've not always known what God is like but now we do. I love that, but now we do, and we do. You know, we haven't experienced the fullness of that personally, but we have this picture. We say, what is God like? How does God interact with people? We don't have to stand in an art gallery and wonder what the proper picture is. Jesus himself says it. The Bible's a, Bible, the scriptures affirm it. That's what God is like. He looks like Jesus. So while there may be many different pictures of God, perhaps in your own experience and understanding, the picture of God, the definitive answer to what God is like is not formed by kind of an amalgam of all these different pictures. It's not formed like, well, let's pull them all together and kind of like a mashup you can do. There's different websites you can go to and you can kind of say, I wonder what, you know, a child would look like if he and her got together and had a child. He kind of gets this mashup and sometimes it's the most hideous looking things, this mashup. And sometimes that's what people have done to kind of figure out what God is like. They've taken all these pictures of God and just kind of made a mashup, and it's like, ugh, it doesn't look very nice. It looks kind of hideous in some ways, and it's it's not clear, and it's ill-defined, and but we've just mashed up all these different pictures. 
Well, the scriptures and Jesus himself, they don't advise us to mash up the different pictures. Jesus comes to us and he says, I'm the shepherd and I'm the picture. I'm the perfect picture. I'm the perfect revelation. I'm the perfect expression of what God is like. So this is why this is important, because we become like the God we, wor we worship. So we don't have to worry in dark moments whether it's been dark moments that have been thrust upon us or dark moments we find ourselves in because of choices and actions made, but in dark moments, we don't have to worry if he'll leave us because the picture David had and Jesus affirmed was he's this shepherd who says in your darkest moments, I'll be with you. I won't leave you. And we don't have to wonder and be anxious or fearful if we've done something wrong and he's angry with us in times of opposition and conflict. Because he said, I'm going to prepare a banquet for you in those times. Someone who wants to have you be blessed and have an abundance and feast, that's not someone who's angry and upset with you. That's someone who's responding to you and caring for you and supporting you and nourishing you as we walk through these things. So we don't have to, oh, what did I, I must have done something wrong. There's hardship in my life. No, no. That is how sometimes people approach things, but that flows out of an incorrect picture of God. And we don't have to be fearful about what he's coming after us with. God's coming after you. Oh, and again, depending on our picture of God, that statement, God's coming after you, can cause a lot of fear and terror or anxiety or concern. But when we have a proper picture of God, the picture tells us he is coming after us. He's coming after us with his unfailing love and goodness. So all of a sudden, the fact that he's coming after me excites me. I can't wait for him. I want more of him. I don't get fearful and hide. I'm like, yes, bring your goodness and bring your unfailing love into my life in greater and greater degree. We've talked before about the transforming love of Jesus, and it is absolutely transformative. And what transforms us is what we look at and what we see. The Holy Spirit opens our minds to see Jesus, to see God as he really is. And as this happens, we're transformed. As we behold his love, we become more loving. As we see his peace, we become more peaceful. As we see his grace or his kindness, we become more gracious and kind. And it is seeing that God in this way that Paul is talking about in Romans when he says this in Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you. Now again, the only way to see that is if you have a proper picture of God. Because there are pictures of God that people hold to and might even be able to point to in the Bible where he's not wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient. That's an improper picture because Paul says, out of a proper picture of God, then as you see this, Jesus, can't you see, oh, just gaze for a minute and don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient he is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? And then he says this, can't you see that it is his kindness that is intended to turn you from your sin? Or as the Passion Translation wraps that up, he says this, Do you realize that all the wealth of his extravagant kindness is meant to melt your heart and lead you into repentance? See, again, the transformation that God desires to happen in our lives and that we so desperately need to happen in our lives, that repentance, that changing the way we think, changing the way we live, and, lean, lean, and becoming more like Jesus, it does need to happen. But it doesn't happen from a scolding. It doesn't happen from a judging. It doesn't happen from a belittling. It happens from having a proper picture of God seeing the extravagant wealth of his kindness, grace, love, and mercy directed at us. And all of a sudden, our hearts soften. All of a sudden, fears are dissipated. All of a sudden, trust goes up. Because the level of intimacy we can have with anyone is based upon the level of trust that we can have. If I can't trust someone, it's going to be very difficult for me to have any real level of intimacy. If the, tr if the trust level is very, very low, well, the intimacy level is going to be very, very low. It's going to be a surface relationship. I know him. He knows me. We have these transactional conversations, but we don't, I don't really trust them. But as trust increases, intimacy can increase. 
which again, in this picture of Psalm 23, we see that desire for intimacy. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and, and that relating with you. And so he wants that. But for us to have that measure of intimacy, we need to be able to trust him. And it is very hard to trust someone if you're not sure that they're good, that they're kind, that they're loving, that they have your best interests and they're going to care for you. If you're worried that they're going to come at you with anger and judgment and vengeance, it's very hard to say, oh, I'm going to trust you completely. Here's my life. And so that's the transformation. And this is the so what. This is digging down a little bit more. So what? Why is it important? Because having a proper picture of God shapes everything. So we've only taken a few more minutes. You could spend a long, long time with that. We've only taken a few more minutes to kind of dig a little deeper into the so what, but hopefully that helps all of us understand a little bit more why this is so important, why it's so important that we have a proper picture, an accurate picture, an understanding of God. But now let me close for just a minute or two with some now what. Okay, we've spent a little bit more time on the so what. Let me move for just a minute or two to the now what? Now what? Okay, what are some of the application points to this? Well, now what is, this will probably raise a number of questions for us. It might, in fact, it might raise more questions than it answers. And guess what? That's okay. Questions are okay. I mean, questions are sometimes uncomfortable, sometimes uh, can be a little bit awkward, but we want to be a place that welcomes questions, welcomes uncertainty, says, you know what? It's okay to have questions. It's okay, okay to ask your questions. That's why we try to have these dinner parties in different settings and brunches where it's easy to just in a very non or, an in, or easy in an informal relational setting, ask your questions. Ask and just we'll walk together. Perhaps you've held to or wondered about images of God that don't seem very Jesus-like. And you've seen, okay, I see Jesus, but I also see this. And I wonder, how do I put these things to get together? Is it, do I just kind of make some mashup and it neither looks as good and clear as it could? And we see these pictures of God that don't look like that we can be assured that, you know, or, or when we see pictures of God that don't look like Jesus, some of the now what is, we can be assured that, okay, there's something else going on because maybe they didn't quite get a clear glimpse through the shadows. Maybe more of the culture was shaping them than they were aware of. And so we got this glimpse of what is, but, but if it doesn't look like Jesus, then there's something going on. And one of the things that's going on is God's letting his kids tell the story. It's still inspired, but to say, you know what? Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they still were telling the story in their own culture, in their own language. And so we said, but it, if it doesn't look like Jesus, there's something else going on. So allow those questions to be raised and process them with us in community. Don't just, you know, kind of stuff them, but let's process them together. Secondly, take some time and reflect on Jesus. We'd encourage you in whatever your devotional reading looks like to regularly land back in the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Just spend time regularly looking again at Jesus. I just did this again just last week, started in Luke again. Just, and, and now I'm in the Christmas story, which seems a little odd, but it is coming sooner or later. But I'll just think, wow, I want to just look again at Jesus. So in your devotional reading, in your prayer, just reflect on what Jesus is like. Consider how he showed love to people. Just think of some of those stories that we read in the gospel. Consider how he served people. Consider the patience he showed to people and the graciousness and kindness. And then as we read the scriptures, if we come across a picture of God that doesn't look like Jesus, again, we know something else is going on because this now becomes not only how we see God, but this becomes how we can read the Bible. Now, again, that's a whole other message, and we're going to leave it at that. But these are some of the implications of having a proper picture of God. And if you'd like to dig a little further into this topic, a book I would highly recommend, I've read it, and I'm actually going through again, is A More Christ-Like God by Brad Jersak. He's written a number of books I'd recommend all that he's written. But this is, this, the whole 
topic of this book is looking at how Jesus reveals God to us and just walking forward some of the implications for that. So again, if I would recommend it to you, if you want to dig a little deeper, you can get it in lots of different forms. A More Christ-Like God by Brad Jersak, a great resource in just helping us all get a proper picture of God. Here's some questions to consider for yourself and in dinner parties these next week as we walk this forward. First one, what have been some pictures of God that you've seen or held? Maybe, maybe just, just take some time to say, what, as, you, as you've grown up through life and read scriptures or different things, maybe that, that, a, that a certain song has presented to you and whatever it is, but what are just some, and, and I'm not saying the bad ones, just, just different pictures. Just, just reflect on some of the different pictures of God that you've seen or held to. And then number two, that we would again bring it back to the perfect picture, becomes our standard. How do these different pictures that we've seen or held to, how do they line up with the picture that Jesus reveals to us? And then depending on how they do, well, we need to adjust accordingly because Jesus isn't one of many pictures of God. He is the perfect picture of God. And then finally, the last question, how does this change how we can relate to God? having the proper picture of God as Jesus. How does it change how we relate to God, how we relate to ourselves, and how we relate to others? Again, the picture of God we have, the mental image of God we have, the understanding of God we have shapes everything. It affects the course of our lives for better or for worse. That's why this is so important, and that's why we're so thankful that God comes to earth as a baby and lives as a man and says, this is what God looks like, and Jesus perfectly reveals that to us for all of history. So let me close in prayer, and then we're going to worship together, and again, look forward to gathering with you next week for brunch and in different settings. And also next week on Thursday, we have a worship night, uh, Thursday the 23rd, and so again, we'd love to have you join us at the church building on Yale and Corey Road. But let's pray. Jesus, I want to thank you that you perfectly show us what God is like. And there are so many different pictures of God that maybe at different points I've held to or seen or been presented. But Lord, you perfectly show us that. So Lord, I pray for myself that my mental image of God and my understanding of God would be continually being shaped by Jesus. And for all of us, that that would be the case. And Lord, for the questions that that would raise, as maybe awkward or as uncomfortable may it be, I pray you'd give us the courage to voice those questions and to share them in community and to process them together as, to, as this community just learns to follow Jesus and walk in the way of Jesus. Thank you that the picture we have of what you're like is Jesus. And he lives it out so perfectly and the scriptures point it to us and your Holy Spirit helps us walk in that way. So Father, all the different ways that we are following, places we are following you, all the different challenges that we navigate in this time of COVID and pandemic and school schedules and back to routines, Lord, help us to represent Jesus well. And thank you for your kindness towards us the extravagant wealth of your kindness that melts our hearts and draws us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us online. Let's worship together one more time. Thanks, guys, for joining with us. As you go about your day this week, we just want to pray. We want to sing this blessing over you and your family. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, if there's something that we can pray for you for this week, please let us know. Uh, reach out to us at our website and on our social media uh, pages, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We would love to pray for you and love to know how we can do that for you. Don't forget about our dinner parties during the week. We have one on Tuesday night and Wednesday nights. Um, it's a great time to gather around the table and fellowship with one another and just talk about life and talk about how things are going. So please connect with us there. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind you guys about is our upcoming worship night this coming Thursday, September 23rd at 7 o'clock. It's not something you want to miss. This is our chance to just worship God, have lots of songs, be together, pray with each other. It's a really great time of just being in God's presence. So I encourage you to come out for that and bring a friend. It's definitely a safe place to connect with. Well, we love you guys and hope you have an awesome week. Cheers.